Hey, welcome to the Carol Remarks Podcast. My name is Carol, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. Let's get right to it. Wow, y'all. Holy cow. All right. I didn't think last night's debate was going to be that bad. I really thought Joe Biden was going to walk out on that stage, be hyped up, pumped up, full of some kind of drug cocktail that they created, and he was going to be like the Joe Biden from the State of the Union address. I really did. They did not do that. And now, now everybody, not just Republicans and conservatives, but Democrats and liberals from CNN are like, saying, you know what, maybe it is time for Joe to step down. Holy cow. Wow, I think they allowed that old, adult, broke man to walk out on that stage and make a buffoon of himself to show to sh- well, we are what we already knew, right? And I'm so glad now that Trump agreed to this. <clears throat> Everybody at first was like, oh, my God, why did Trump agree to this? Blah, blah, blah. All these rules. It's on CNN. It's got Jake Tapper, Dana back. Blah, blah, blah. I'm so glad it was plastered all over CNN. Because you know who watches CNN. Well, the other side, the people that we need to see this watches CNN. And they watched it hard. And even, like I said, the anchors, the moderators, the pundits, the experts, the political analysts all over there on CNN were like, um, wait a minute. Now, they had to have known this. What about all the people surrounding Joe so close who kept saying, oh, he's spry. He's young. We can hardly keep up with him. They lied, lied, lied. I cannot wait to see what uh, Karen Jean says about this whatever her name is, Karine Jean-Pierre. Uh, I cannot wait to, for her to come out and try to cover. And did you see Kamala Harris on uh, CNN last night with Anderson Cooper after, that, after all that? Yeah, I have never seen her look and sound so presidential. And I have... And I use the word presidential loosely. I put it in air quotes. But I think someone has been working with her on her speech and all dial- all that. I think someone has been working with her, coaching her, training her, because they know. Here's what I think. Here's what I think. This has nothing to do with us, Republicans or conservatives. This is all about Joe and Jill. Of course, Joe has no clue. Not, he's clueless because he, he's just... He's an old man. In his younger days, he was just stupid. But now that he's older, I don't want to call him stupid. He's just not real. I don't even want to call him not real bright. He's just old. He's not there anymore in his mind. But Jill is. And I think Jill wanted this badly. And I think the people around her were like, oh, yeah, you can do this. Put him out there. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Meantime, all of them, same pe- all of those same people are going behind Jill's back thinking, oh my God, this is a disaster. We need to find a backup plan. We need to let them hang out the drive. Because, you know, people are too faced up there in D.C. You know they are. They're not loyal. Anyway, I'm going on and on about something that I really uh, know nothing about because I'm not up there. But, I mean, come on. You could imagine that, right? So, anyway. Oh my gosh, I said anyway. How many times did Joe Biden say, by the way, last night? <laughs> Um, so what do y'all, th- well, I already know what y'all think. It was all over Twitter. This, this was a disaster for, for Joe. Of course, they did this on purpose. They let, they let him go out there and make America, the Democrats and liberals see. But why? Why would they do that? Were they trying to line somebody up in the background in the meantime? Were they trying to coach Kamala in the meantime? You know, what What were they trying to do in the background all this time, knowing full well that they were not going to, you know, have Joe out there? I mean, he cannot run. He can't run. He can't do it. 
He can't. Right? He cannot do it. So, I think my blog post today on the Victor Girls will be the replacements. And it's going to be either Gavin Newsom or it's going to be Kamala Harris. And I'm telling you, do not rule out Kamala Harris. She is the vice president. I know you and I don't like her. I know you and I think she's a buffoon. We all know that. Just watch and listen to her talk nowadays. She doesn't use the word salads like she used to anymore. So something, something has clicked. Something, somebody's been working with her. Because where has she been? Where has she been recently? She's been off doing something. Going to president training school. <laughs> so yeah, and then the Democrats will also be able to say, we have the first female president. We have the first black female president. Oh, y'all, watch out. Watch out. I wonder who she'll pick for her vice president, though. That would be the question, too. So, Gavin Newsom or Kamala Harris. Or maybe it's maybe it's Kamala Harris and Gavin Newsom. Who knows? But I know one thing we're not talking about. We're not talking about Trump's VP pick because he didn't announce it last night. So, he didn't need to because he knew, he knew he won that thing. My God, I think Trump was surprised. I do. I think Trump was stunned at what he was up against last night. Not up against, but I think he was surprised about the Joe Biden that showed up. I really, really do. All right. I've gone on and on long enough. I don't even know. I can't even think of a question. What? Okay. Question of the day. If you watched the debate, or I'm sure you're going to watch highlights, what was your favorite moment from the debate last night? Mine probably was when he talked about January 6th. When the moderators brought up January 6th, they thought that they had him. And I have to admit, I have to admit, I think Jake Tapper, Dana Bash, they did a great job. I really do. They did a good job. They were fair. They seemed to be fair. And I quite frankly liked the muted mics because you got to hear and listen to what they were actually saying without being the other person interrupting all the time and bickering without that crosstalk. I, I liked it. They both seem to be well behaved, even when they know, you know, they were both, well, I say both, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Where was I going? Oh, my favorite moment, January 6th, January 6th, when he, when Trump answered January 6th, when he said, I gave, I had the best economy on January 6th, low crime rate on January 6th, closed borders on January 6th. I mean, come on. That was a brilliant answer. That was probably my favorite answer. I hate that they didn't get around to the trans cult, but you know, that's another time, I guess. Another topic for another time. But they did talk about the immigration. Of course, they talked about abortion. But they talked about the border, which I think the border to me right now is probably the top two. The border and to me, trans cult is another high priority for me because, you know, I'm a woman. All right. I'm babbling. I'm on four hours of sleep right now. Sleep is for suckers, right? I cannot wait for Pat Gray show in about 25 minutes. Uh, it's going to be great. And I can't wait to hear and listen to all the commentary this morning. I will be writing for the Victory Girls blog. So look for my blog post on that. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend. We get the baby tomorrow. But yes, the gent and I will be on here this weekend to give you uh, an episode on Saturday and Sunday. And, uh, all right, have a great one. Thanks for listening. What's that? Who pays your salary? What's that? Who pays? What's that? We're not a democracy.